Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Bright Violet Arts. My name is Valerie Morris, and this video is about my bullet journal setup for the month of April 2023. And I went with a very simple, easy uh, cherry blossom theme this time around. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to paint little blossoms. Um, I used gouache paint and I think they turned out so cute. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna get it started with some hand lettering today. And this is a, a black paint pen. It's a five millimeter size Posca pen. And I am coming around the left side of each stroke that makes up the letters. And down that left side of the stroke, I'm gonna put another color. In this case, I'm just using a kind of a raggedy gray paint pen, but it doesn't matter that it's raggedy because now I'm coming back in with that same black paint pen and I am gonna do another coat on top and that uh, cleans up the drop shadow and the lettering. So now it's got a three-dimensional look. With my pink gouache paint, I just uh, painted in a little rectangle and when it was dry, I took a fine line black Posca pen to add in a calendar. And that's gonna be pretty much it for the left side of the spread, except for the finishing washi tape design that I'm putting on here. For the illustration on the cover page, I am actually painting uh, a cherry blossom design on a separate piece of journal paper. This is still dot grid paper. It's not fancy paper or anything. Um, it's from a notepad that I have that I purchased from Archer and Olive that matches the journal paper. And I had to do this because I had painted directly into the journal uh, the first time around a similar design, but I just, I hated it. I gotta be honest, I, I couldn't live with it. So I have uh, decided to paint on a separate page and then paste this second attempt on top of the first painting and that will fix the issue for me. The paint that I'm using for the illustrations this month is from Windsor and & Newton and it is the Designer's Gouache line. And I just have a few colors. The pink is called Opera Pink and then I'm using a, a primary yellow and a black and a white um, to mix everything else. Here's a look at the completed cover page after the uh, surgical implantation of a second painting. I'm gonna start off the calendar with some floating boxes and then I will use a Zig Clean Color Dot marker in pink to add a little circle for the dates. Um, that marker just makes perfect circles and, and I love it, it just daubs them on. So I'll fill out the days of the month here and then I'm gonna mimic the, the washi tape pattern from the cover page with the, the pale pink and the black lines. Um, so what I wanna say here about cutting out this Dutch door is I started with a, with a tab on it. I, I expected that I would like the tab. Um, you're gonna see that tab disappear because I will just chop it right off later. It, it didn't work with the design for me. So, ah, oh, there it is, now it's gone. So the Dutch door flap is gonna expose this part of the inside page and I am going again with uh, just a simple cherry blossom painting. And these really are just as easy as it gets for, for flowers. I just am taking a small filbert brush to make the petals and I'm just doing a, a five petal star shape. And then I have a detail brush for uh, the, the centers of the flowers. I am using uh, another size one round brush here for the leaves, but it really doesn't matter. If you wanna try something like this, you can get very similar results with a variety of different brushes. This is um, a very good starter design, I think, for people that haven't painted a lot. Um, it is just really, really simple. It's hard to mess it up, uh, just making the, the star-shaped petal designs and then adding the details in the center. So um, it's, it's a good one to, to try if you're new to uh, any kind of painting. The purpose of the space in this Dutch door is for my task list, which I've already started there, and my habits, uh, which I'm gonna be tracking on miniature calendars. But for just some interest and just for fun, I am painting the inside flap completely dark gray. 
And then once it's dry, I have some white stamp ink and a miniature calendar stamp for those habit trackers. I'm going to flip back and finish off the calendar now. So this is a, a title that looks just like the cover page title with the drop shadow lettering. And then I'm just going to swipe in a little pink here for the day of the week header on each of these columns. So I learned something cool while I was putting in this quote. Uh, it has a lot of lines of text, so I wanted guidelines, and I found out that it, it is possible to use a pencil and a ruler to make guidelines, and then the pencil will erase quite easily uh, off the gouache paint if you just use a light touch with the eraser. I'm using a teeny tiny detail brush now to make the dark colored dots on the center of the flower. I'm finishing off my task list by highlighting spaces with a pink Crayola Super Tips marker. And that will finish off this uh, Dutch door spread with the calendar and then inside the task list and habit trackers. Moving on to the first weekly spread of the month. I am going to keep this very cohesive with the cover page art and the previous spread as well. Uh, all the same colors and it's going to be another cherry blossom painting of course. Although I am going to mix it up, I'm going to try to put in like a pink moon in the background. So I want that to be a perfect circle and here I'm going to make myself a stencil. I have a circle cutting tool which is very handy and I'm making a little stencil on scrap paper with it. I wanted the moon to be in the center of that gray box, so I had to trim the excess scrap paper from the stencil just so I could see where I was placing it within that background. And then I've just mixed up a color of pink that matches the marker that I used for the day of the week headings. Uh, that is just a little bit of opera pink with white and a touch of the primary yellow to get that peachy pink color. And then I'm going to come in with a, kind of a scraggly looking tree branch here, but I'm not terribly worried about the tree branch because most of it will be covered with the blossoms. To get the color change within the flower petals between the pink and the white, the way that I do that is I dip my, I put, well on the palette I put uh, some pink paint next to some white paint but I do not mix them together and then when I dip my brush in I get some pink paint and then some white paint on the brush together and then just stroke them down and that's going to give variations in the flower petals which makes a nice pinky white cherry blossom okay for week two I am going to go with a divided painting and what I mean by that is I'm going to start with this rectangle that I've masked off with washi tape and then I'm going to split it into three smaller rectangles with a narrower washi tape. And then I'll just paint as normal onto this but the idea is that I'm going to split it into like three separate paintings that are um, continuous if that makes sense. After I put in the larger flowers, I'm going to come back in and put in little tiny unopened flowers or flower buds at the ends of the branches. I think that having the unopened buds at the end of the branches gives the whole painting a little more of a delicate look. And now I'm going to remove this washi tape. Um, it was a little bit stickier than I wanted it to be. And I think that in the future I'm going to just purchase some low tack artist tape to use for this function instead of using my washi tape collection. Um, for one thing, it's less expensive than washi tape, and also you can be certain of how strong the adhesive is gonna be because a lot of times I will use washi tape and then peel it off after I've completed you know, some sort of uh, artwork or image, and it will rip my paper because the adhesive is so sticky. 
And other times the tape is not sticky enough and then my marker or my paint or whatever I'm using will seep underneath the edges of the paint so the masking off is not as successful as it could be. So I'm just gonna eliminate the, the mystery there and spring for a few different widths uh, in rolls of artist tape that has a, a low tack on it. Getting back to the timeline here, I'm adding in my quote now for week three. And I'm putting these quotes in with a white gel pen and it took me a little bit of practice of writing this white gel pen over the gouache paint before I kind of got the hang of it. What I found is that using a normal pressure is not okay. I had to use an extremely light hand with that pen for the ink to show up. It's kind of like counterintuitive, I would have expected that more pressure would give a, a more opaque white line, but that's not how it works when I'm writing on a gouache background. For me, just a feather light touch gave the most white ink coverage with each stroke. Here's a look at the completed week three spread. And then moving on to the last week of the month, I'm gonna do one more larger scale uh, cherry blossom painting here. And this one, I, I liked it because I could really see the variation in the pink and the white paint in those flower petals, just because it, you know, it's a bigger scale and the petals are, are bigger to the eye. I really did like the look of the week four spread. It was probably my favorite weekly of the month this time around. Here's one last look at week four, and that's gonna bring us to the end of the month. So let's do a quick flip through of the pages I made today for the cherry blossom theme. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you made it to this point in the video, I would love it if you left a cherry blossom emoji in the comments. If you are someone who likes to hang out over on Instagram, you can find me there at Bright Violet Arts and see a lot more of my bullet journal and my illustration work as well. I am using an Archer and Olive bullet journal as always. And if you'd like to make an Archer and Olive purchase, um, you can use my affiliate code for a 10% off discount at checkout. That discount code is Bright Violet Arts 10 and I will link that in the description box. Okay, well that is gonna do it for the April setup. Thanks again for checking out this video, and I will be back again soon with more videos about bullet journaling and illustration. See you there.